All right, we're going to begin. Um, thanks for being here. Um, we titled this uh, session uh, Civi Deathmatch, right? We just didn't want to be, as you notice, I'm not going to use a, a PowerPoint, uh, but I will be demoing and, and walking through the steps. But um, and we also named it Civi Deathmatch, um, phone banking versus event turnout, right? The idea with this session was to just highlight two different ways that any organization, hey, welcome, hey. Hey. two different ways that any organization can use city CRM to turn out people, right? So you could turn out people for, for a rally if you're doing like uh, civic engagement. You can turn out people for a, a fundraiser, right? If you're doing more like what they call community organizing, you can turn out people for your monthly meetings, right? Because um, for community organizers, you might want to track attendance, which helps you track leadership development. You know, you may have a criteria of like if some if people show up for three different events, they're at this level, or whatever. So tracking your efforts to turn out people is really key, right? Um, so. You know, the, the, I guess the metaphor of a wrestling match may be like death match, you know. Um, it's basically just to set it up. There's these two different ways that we think about turning out people, right? So phone banking, the plus side is you can run some very um, complex phone banking operations, right? Um, you can have teams of people, right, coming in. And an example is we're going to raise money. Some people say, we're going to do dialing for dollars, right? So we're going to raise some money. So we, we're going to train our volunteers, our key leaders, to do outreach to people, right? One way, and, and it's pretty elaborate. So you might have a certain time frame, right? So phone banking is probably the way to go in that way, right? So you set up your teams of people. The person organizing the phone bank sets up all the their phone bankers in, in Civi CRM, and then also um, assigns them to different people. So if you have a target group of 1,000 or 20,000 or 10,000 people that you want to outreach to, you set up your team, you create your list, you know, you have an orientation. So you start assigning people, right? And this is how we're going to do it. Similar to what we're doing today, right? We'll demonstrate what you as a volunteer are going to do, right? Here's your scripts and all that. This is how you get it. The person organizing it, the organization, it's a lot of work, right? And you have to be somewhat tech savvy, right? There's a lot of different levels of technical use, right? Um, some people are users. They can input data pretty well. We may even make a special form that's very simple. But then there's a level of like coordinating and assigning and being able to, to use CBCR fluently in detail, right? So phone banking, it, you do have to know what you're doing and have experience doing it, right? Um, if you don't, there's a huge learning curve for that person, because not only do you have to know how to do it, you have to train your team and then monitor it, right, as it goes on. So on one end, or one corner, we have phone banking, right? If you have that enabled in your um, CBCRM, oh, and by the way, we call it CBCRM power base, right? I work for a techn progressive technology project, and we work with uh, close to 100 organizations, 100 groups that use PowerBase. They mostly do community-based organizing, some union organizing, but they're all trying to like, do leadership development, get community involved on their issues, right? Which is different from using it maybe for a, a volunteer group or you know, um, a different type of nonprofit, right? So we changed the name to PowerBase, but it's Civi CRM. Um, if you wanted to explore phone banking, um, <coughs> I have a, a nine-page document, step-by-step -step instructions. There's a lot of setup involved, right? It's part of a Civi Engage, right? So if you go to campaigns in this case, um, you could go to new survey and start from there, right? Um, so there's all sorts of different um, approaches to doing this, but you would have to have one person knowing how to use phone banks, right? Setting it all up, then bringing your team together, and then training them on how to do it, right? Um, 
the coordinator for phone banking also has to know how to pull the reports up, how to troubleshoot. But you're basically monitoring the whole process, right? We've seen groups, there's a group in Iowa, Iowa CCI, they're amazing, right? Statewide organization. And, and they use this and they raise it really, really large amounts, you know, really good amounts of money, right? But they have the capacity to do it. We work closely. Um, it's almost as if we're on staff with them at the time, right? So that's all to say that it is involved and you do have to know, uh, be very comfortable with uh, CIVI CRM, right? What we call power base, right? Now you say you have a presentation on phone We have materials, step-by-step -step setup and all that. So I'm illustrating a point and I could pull it up in a minute, but it's really involved and really detailed. We share all that, right? And what we do is we, we talk, people call us up, hey, we have a phone bank. We have an event coming up in a couple of months. So we work, you know, develop a timeline and we, we make sure it's set up properly. We work with them, we train them. We do a dry run through and all that. And then they train their staff when they're actually doing it, right? So it's an involved process, right? So phone banking, involved process, uh, a lot of detail to it, right? Um, um, a lot of coordination as well. So one does have to have the capacity or an organization has that capacity to run it, to do it. Right, um, and not 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 even talking about your phones, all your systems, and all that. You know where you're gonna make the phone calls, right? So you have phone banking, one way to attract people to an event or to raise money, right? So you're contacting people, right? You can set it up also to you can change info. Say you're calling people up and like, hey, this is Tomas. Yeah, I think you got my last name spelled wrong or whatever. I I want to update your info, so you can even up do minor updates right from that interface that screen right but again the key thing is um, it's really involved and you have to know what you're doing and if you don't work with someone that's going to walk you through the steps and, and help you test it out as well right so hey welcome so um, in the death match that was phone bank right involved um, it's really good for what it does and all that. a lot of organizations and that we work with, smaller uh, grassroots organizations, community-based, um, they do a lot of regular meetings. So if you work with constituents that, clients that have regular meetings, right, and they want to track people, they want to track attendance. They're like, hey, how do we track um, who attended? And how do we track how many times they've attended, pulling reports out, right? How can we outreach to them? And, and what if we don't, we don't have a lot of capacity, but what if we don't only do half of the list today and we want to start up again tomorrow? We're going to be doing this all week. Is there a somewhat simpler way to do it than phone bank, right? Um, and also we want to track, we want to make sure that they have childcare, because um, we want to offer that. Or for some groups, they're like, do you need interpretation into other languages? Because for that organization, they may talk to funders or, or foundations that, that fund them, they want data. Oh, well, how many meetings did you have? How many times did you need interpreters? So they're like, how can we track all that information, right? Um, Childcare, do you need a ride back and forth, right? So for those organizations, um, and they're primarily the ones that we work with, right? There has to be a simpler way than phone banking. So what, what we use is it's the events component, or some people say module, right? Um, the CIVI module, right, which is events, right up here, right? Um, and for those of you that just came in, um, we call CBCRM power base. Um, we work uh, in, with groups that are doing community-based organizing, right, political organizing. Power is a concept in, in organizing as citizen action. <laughs> you can tell, like, we want to change power. So we relabeled it as power base, but it's CBCRM. Everything that I'm showing and talking about is available to anyone using CBCRM. So, um, so on the other side, we have events, right? It's a little bit simpler. Um, if you have the basics of CIVI, it's a little bit simpler to set up. But more importantly, though, we're using events, the component, and all the different features that it offers to help us track and to pull reports on attendance, leadership development, um, needs like language, childcare, all that. That's, that's the, what we really like events for, right? Another big difference is when you do this to do outreach to your regularly scheduled meetings, they're not public events. 
So we use them internally. So we can set up, and I'll demonstrate in a minute, we'll, we can set them up and we're using them internally, right? Well, we have our group of people that we want to invite to the event. We put them into the event. And then using a batch update process, we'll get a screen, a phone banking screen, really simple, where you can log, you know, hey, we're having a meeting or, you know, are you coming to this training or the fundraising? Yes, no, whatever. You, know, you can log all of that. And if you have to leave, you don't finish, you just save everything. When you log back on, it'll still be there right when you left off. Right? It's a very handy feature. The screen is, is very handy, right? Um, <clears throat> it's very customizable, right? It's based on profiles. So you can customize every column, every, every piece of information that you have, right? So the two different ways, right? So if this were a real match, a wrestling match for us, the winner is going to be um, um, doing outreach using events. That's, for us, that's the winner. And for most small to medium-sized organizations that want to do that type of work, track it so they can provide data, could be for their constituents, for their funders, right? If it's a government grant that's funding this type of work, um, events is really, really key, right, for this, right? So the winner is events, right? If it was a wrestling match or something, you know, it's a metaphor I was using, but events. So what we're going to do right now is I'm going to show how we do it, right? And just break down the steps. Um, yeah, break down the steps of how and, and why it's done that way. So um, I have I have um, allergies, so my throat's like that. So I, I apologize. <laughs> Be a little closing now. All right. So um, I'm assuming everyone here is is everyone familiar with events or setting up events, right? Okay. So I'm using a training database. This is actual data, but it's anonymized. Uh, it's from Ohio, actually. Um, so it's cool. Not all the names, everything. We just anonymized everything. So, um, so we're going to do event. So the situation is um, we're an organization that has regularly scheduled meetings, right? They may be membership meetings, um, we, whatever it may be. But we have a, meetings on a regular basis. We want to take, we want to see who comes. We want to do outreach, and we want to track whether they show up or not, right? And we also want to track whether they need childcare or a ride to the event. There's all these different metrics that we would like to collect, right? Um, it helps us with our grant writing, you know, with our reporting, et cetera, right? So I'm going to go to events right now. So I'm going to walk through uh, a process with this, right? So um, I'm going to do new event. I'll just use a template. Mm -mm. No, I'm going to use um, outreach gathering. It's just all fake, right? So I, you know, I make it part of my campaign, right? We use campaign component. Everything goes under a campaign. These are all going to be attendees, right, that we want. Um, is this April? Yeah, April 2015. So just imagine you have a template, and, and now with the new recurring events or meetings, like we can even do it more efficient. But so I have my template. I'm going to use it. This one's for April. Again, this is internal, so you do need the start date and time. Um, and we tell a lot of the groups that we work with to always put the end date because a lot of groups don't, and they call us up like, hey, "It's not giving us data. It's still running, right? If you don't put an end date, it's still running." So. Um, I'm going to go to April 2015. And this is going to be on Friday, right, at 1.13. OK. So I'm not going to make this public at all, right? I'll make it active, but it won't be public at all. Again, it's being used internally <coughs> as a tool for us and our organization to turn out people, right? What we really want are the features that events offers to, to track, to track things, right? So I'm going to save and done. Um, let me highlight this, cheat it a little bit. All right, so so I have my event now, right? And as you know, there's several ways to get, uh, uh, to build a list to put into this event, right? You can do an, an advanced search on it. You can go to the event and then add participants, right? Um, what we're, the, 
for us, the next step is, for our group, the next step is we want to, quote unquote, invite people to this event. We want to put a group of people inside this event because then we're going to do phone outreach to them, right? So that's what invite means, right? Or register, right? So I'll just do a search really quick, advanced search. Right. I happen to have a, a lot of groups here. I'm going to do major donors, for example. You know, they want to be more involved, so we're going to involve them, right? So I can search for these folks. Okay. So I got I have 13 people, right? Could be a thousand, could be 500. Some groups are doing like a thousand, and, and they're struggling with it, but they have it down now. They got it. So, so I'm, all I'm doing is in, inviting them to this event, right? Um, add contacts to event. Here it is. So you're and them for the event. Yes. Um, here's the thing. The way we're using this internally, we can actually change it to targeted, right? Because some people are uncomfortable with registering targeting. So I'm just going to put targeted, right? Because or we're going to do outreach to them. Or invite. Yeah, exactly. So you can customize this. Uh, by default, it's, you know, it's registered, right? So. Um, and that's all I'm doing. I'm not going to send them a con confirmation. This is for us, right? So I'm going to click Save. All right. Or is they might like to have your list you're doing, going through those folks, right? And the status is invite or invite or invite list. Talk to them and confirm them that you're changing the register. The status, register for that event. Yep. So what we're doing right now is we're, we just set up an event. We have it every month or whatever the time period is. And we have people that, for whatever reason, right, we can, we can you know, build a list. But, you know, these are people that are interested or potential members or whatever it may be. But we know who they are, and we want to do outreach to them because we want them to show up to our event. Yes, sir? So I'm trying to figure out the two comparisons, and it seems like you can either phone bank this list or you can um, this way of inviting them, and then instead of using city survey to phone bank them, you're still going to phone them, but you're just going to use batch update on this using the profile. Yes. Okay. Yes. And I'm going to demonstrate, and then I'm going to highlight a couple of problems that come up, and how we've solved the problems. Right. So, so you know, you select your 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 contacts. Um, did I? Oh, did I? Got it. Okay. Um, all right. So then there's different ways to do this. I never use events. I always do advanced search for everything. So um, let's see, find participants, search. OK. I'm going to select them all. So if you just have one person, right, this is a small group. Oh, yeah, Tomas, can you outreach these folks, right? That's not always the case. But if, if you were just doing this straight up, one person, right? Um, you would choose a profile to use to call. Um, update event invite responses. Again, these are all customizable, right? So I chose that profile. And now you see I have my screen right here, right? You can customize these. Some people don't like to do like second calls or whatever, but this is what we have right now, right? If you wanted this in alphabetical order, before I went to this step, I could have sorted. When I pulled up the search, I could have sorted them, and they would have kept that sort to put in. These are right here, yeah, custom profiles. Yes, sir. Custom fields on the participant, right? Mm. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. And for those of you that don't do, you probably do, but um, there's documentation everywhere about it. We have a lot of step by steps on how to even create all these different custom fields, profiles to use for this, right? So this is, a, it's, it's, it's phone banking, right? But it's using a different technique, right? What it offers that phone banking does not offer is we'll be able to track all of this, right? For organizing work or, you know, doing outreach for political campaigns or what, it's really important because it tells us not only how many, how much our efforts were, right? How many times did we call, what did they say? But as I'll show you in a minute, it also allows us to pull reports. Like, of all the people that said they were coming, how many actually showed up, right? Or 
of all the people that attended, so now you're keeping score, right, your track. So for us, our groups, leadership development, how many times, how much are they involved? Do they really care about our issue, right? So now by doing it this way, we can pull all sorts of searches or reports to track that, right? Um, I'll show you where, where we put it in ours, right? But it's arbitrary, you know, one through five, you know, these are all our, five, our fours, people have attended at least three events or whatever, right? So by using this, the big, one of the differences is by using events to do this internally, like I'm doing now, you can track that. And for organizing, it's really key, right? It's really key. We have an organization in LA, um, Scope, they're called. They do uh, a lot of organizing. And they actually paid us to do a custom report. So they track percentages of how many times they said yes and they showed up. They have it down to a science, right? Um, so for them, it's really important to be able to track that. And we can't do that using phone banking, right? The, but, so this is a big reason why we like it. I like it. And it's not too hard to do if you're comfortable with CBCRM, right? So a couple of things. First call, you can put the date. If you're, it's only 13 people. If you're going to do it all, you just put the date in. It's really simple, right? Um, yes, no, left message. Some people customize the response, right? Yes, <coughs> you could create a field and, and it would go in here. And I did it yesterday for a group here in Denver and they're like notes, right? And they also wanted the responses, they wanted it uh, changed, right? And they wanted it bilingual, right? So I did that for them. I showed them how to do it, right? So, so again, all of this is customizable. Yes, ma'am. That's a good question, right? Um, and I'm being transparent. Phone making, uh, we would need like at least an hour just to get through the how to set it up and then to demonstrate it, right? But um, you can set up different user roles as volunteers or phone bankers. We did it for one group and customize the screen so they really don't have to do much. We set it up for them and they just, we train them on the steps but not on finding the setup or all that. But well, you could expose this, right? Like just this part of it, you could expose it through the Drupal web form and you, theoretically yeah. that would be a nice <coughs> screen. So if you take your CMS that's Drupal, mm -hmm. then this screen could look nicer in the web form and you could just limit them to not going to Civi but going to the yeah. Drupal web forms. Exactly. How, how would you select the Yeah, that's my next step. Yeah. I'll show you how we do it here. And you're totally right. Um, you can do a lot of things. You can expose it through Drupal and all that. Yeah. 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 But we balance it out, though, right? So for us, um, we have uh, I don't know, over 90 groups, right? And right now, uh, there's three of us. We're about to lose Mark, so there's just two of us. So when we start doing a lot of that work, it's capacity, right? Um, and so some groups were like, hey, and if they want to pay, then we either outsource it and get it done or whatever. But yeah, there's a lot of things you can do, right? But right out of the box, you can basically do this if you understand profiles and, and setting up these fields, right? So here it is, right? Uh, always, we tell people, update participants. So now this, you can actually search on this if you make them searchable, right? I'm going to go back before I do like, hey, this is a problem when this is the issue when you have teams. How do you do that? Before I do that, um, I said earlier as we started out that you can track whether they're coming or not. But for a lot of our organizations, the smaller ones, um, their grant, their funders, the government, they want to know other data too, right? So um, this is called update event participant info. And just like you're doing, are you coming, yes or no? You can do this right here, right? Same thing. Child care needed, how many, right? Do you need a ride, right? Um, I work with someone that we, we did language, right? Do you need interpretation, right? Because they were trying to get the city to sponsor that or to, um, they wanted a line item in their budget to, to hire and train interpreters and all that. So you have to have data for that. 
So for them, for the same event, they created some fields that allowed them to capture that. And then they could pull reports or searches on it. Right? Very handy. OK. I'm going to go back to advanced search, right? So here's the thing, right? We have a few people that want to do outreach, right? They're like, one of the weaknesses of this, phone banking is much better than this, right? You can create your groups, your people, and whoever you assign, you can have a mechanism like after so many days you release them, so they go back into the general pool. Phone banking is truly designed to do that type of work. It's heavy duty, right? This is an event component that we're using for outreach, right? So how do we set up teams, right? It's not perfect, but here's one thing we do, right? So if you do a search for um, people in this event, so I pull up the event, and then also um, under custom fields, I think it's under here. Um, sorry, my eye is in there. Uh, staff responsible, right? So if our pool of people, if we're an organizing group, and or you do this work ahead of time, if I'm organizing this, I have five volunteers going to be do this, I know the group of people that we're going to quote unquote invite or target, right? I divide it up. It could be by familiarity, they know this, or by geography or whatever, right? Once I do that, I can pick, I can do my search for these participants in this event and the ones that are assigned to Lucia in this case, right? So when I'm doing the training, when people show up, I'll go through the steps, right? And our groups do this, okay? Pull up your event, make event participants, and add another layer to the search of staff responsible, right? Some people don't want that because they use staff responsible in other ways, truly for staff, and they have some volunteers that are really good. So then uh, we've worked around that by creating a separate field, right? Uh, right. Custom field, and so with all the volunteers. Both way to assign the staff to that person. Think you got a group of hundred people, mm -hmm. and I've got three guys calling. How would you assign the three guys to that staff to, the, to those people that are calling? Yeah. So if you have a, a uh, search result with the ones that are, uh, you know, the one hundred, uh -huh. then you can click through. If you if you have to have some way of determining who this person is, sure. staff is, yeah. and then. On the uh, patch up the, is your profile. Or assign that with so you, you click them. them you select them and then you click the person that's responsible for uh, So select yeah. them on the search results, then use uh, a patch update by a profile, and the profile has to yeah. have the staff person, and then you select it on the first row Makes and copy down to all yes. the Yes. Exactly. Um, and other groups do it because they're doing this day in and day out. Um, um, the group yesterday, they go out. It was amazing. I was like, damn. It's like, they had lists. Every time they go to schools, they do school and parent, student and parent outreach. They have, every time they go out once a week, they bring like stacks of, of forms that they need the input. So we're trying to figure out that workflow. But as you're doing this, what they do is whoever that, so I'm an organizer assigned to these schools. So they're going to be, I'm going to be responsible for them or I'm the person. So using, because they enter this all the time, it, for them it's easy. They don't even have to go that route. What they do is they, they have their whole invite list, like students and all these Denver schools, right? They pull them up. So they would just, the instructions are pull up your list, your group of people. And then if you're Tomas, the second one is staff assigned or however they have it assigned. And because you do this day in and day out, you already have it. It's going to give you a list of the people that are assigned to you no matter what, right? But, but they do it every single day. That's all they do is outreach and, and, and uh, but if you don't, yeah, someone has to do that work in exactly what, what you described, right? And so that's... And there's yeah. a difference when you create the custom field right now, it looks like you're creating it on contact, but you could have it on the participant record, right? So per event, this changes. Yeah. So yeah. People, different people can call that person next time around. Yeah. You always see, so you always need someone running or coordinating it, right? Because not everyone, even on, in an organization, like in the, even in our staff, not everyone has the same expertise, right? I don't do development work, Jamie does that. And these organizations that we're working with, you always, so you want to train, or we train the point person. And we run through the scenarios. We do tests, a lot of testing, until they're confident and they know it. So because they're going to be teaching it and running it for their organizations, 
whether coalitions, whoever it may be, right? Um, and as you said, there's different ways to use this. There's a lot of creative ways. People come up, we're like, wow, okay, that works, right? And for some people, they want phone banking, which is elaborate and all that, but you know, we're dialing for dollars. We have a statewide organization and we have the capacity. We have 23 volunteers or whatever that are good at this. So for them, it makes sense to do it more elaborately because they have the resources, the capacity, right? They've called us like two, two months ahead of time to install it and to practice and all that. But day in and day out, for a lot of these, the smaller organizations, this is a great way to do this. And now we can search, right? Now we can do a, um, we can do a search on, on so the, the, the demo I do and, and what we do with this group is, um, so because you did all that and they attended, oh, so the next step is, so after you, you do your phone banking, all this stuff, right? You do two or three attempts, right? You have your meeting. So typically what you can do is, a lot of these groups have their sign-in sheets, right, at the meeting, right? And then you can get the sign-in sheet and match them up, change their status from targeted to attended, right? Or uh, some groups, they use, uh, you know, the interface called Civi Mobile, right? So um, it's not that robust at all, but one thing it can do is check in people for events, right? So you pull up your event and you have the listing of the event. Hey, Tomas, what's up? You're cheek. They're, so it just change your status to attend it, right? So that's the second part of it, right? You gotta reconcile, right? The, the outreach you did, the effort, right? The, and what actually happened, did they show up or not? Because just because they say yes, and then you compare it, right? They said yes, how many people said yes but didn't show up? After a while you see the patterns and you might wanna take them off that list because they're kind of flaky or whatever. They say yes but they never do. So this kind of data can help you also. Um, but that's the second part, right? Um, the interface on a larger phone, it works really well, right? It doesn't work for that many things, but it works for that, right? Ding, and it just works. Beautiful, right? Um, so what does that mean? So several things, right? You, you've seen the custom searches. like So because I'm doing this now, I can just pull up, you know, I want people that attended at least three events, right? And I can even... I could even narrow it down to the type because we track that if you do, right? So now you can do all this, right? And this means they're, they're level four in our leadership, right? So you can do a batch up, you know, you can make them a level four. So these are the types of information that you, these are the types of things that you can do, right? You can track, but you can't do it if you don't track the information, right? Um, so there's a lot of different things that, that you can do and people want that they have to report to their funders, to their constituency, right? So, so they're, they're trying to get better at tracking things. There's a thing in community organizing, I don't know if you've heard of it, like a lot of people say like, how can you quantify the movement? And you know, there's a lot of lefty talk, you know, I've, I've been guilty of that too, I'm like, ah, eh, whatever. But the reality is, no, nah, we have to, right? There's some things you can't measure, but there's so many things you can, right? And it's not that hard, right? Um, we put, it, we put it back to the people. We're like, well, okay, you're doing a job, and if you're accountable to these donors, for example, or whoever it may be, I want to do a good job. I want to show them that I can measure my work because they deserve to know, right? Uh, or if it's your community, and these are people that don't have jobs or they're struggling or whatever, and I'm getting paid to do this work and all that. So the least I can do is be accountable, right, to show what our efforts are doing, right? So you can measure a lot of different things. Um, I want to show you one, one thing here. I'm going to pull up myself. I'm in this training database, right? So um, we have this feature. Do, do any of you use summary fields, for example? Yes. Okay. Yeah? Summary fields? OK. Yeah. yeah. Another, yeah. Another part of our work is doing grassroots fundraising and technology, um, integration. Of, and we hired a consultant, and what should we do, what should we track to make CBCRM better for people doing grassroots fundraising, right? So among the things we did is we created this field. So if you look up a contact, right, you can do it in mass, right, in the in advanced search, but on an individual level, you can pull up a contact, click on their summary fields. These are calculated totals, right? So I can call, I'm gonna call up Tomas, but before I call him up, I click on summary fields. I know how much money he's given. When was the last time he's given? But if I'm an organizer, I may have a different set of questions. So I scroll down, 
And um, this is being developed right now, but like number of events attended. Wow, this guy attends a lot. I know he's a four, but now I know why. Look at this, right? Uh, no shows as percent of, a, of total events. How many times did the guy say he's going to show up, but then he doesn't show up? These are all, for organizers, it's really helpful information. So now you're quantifying everything, right? All right. Uh, attended as percent of turnout attempts, right? A lot of groups, they're getting more savvy of this, and they're starting to take people off because you're wasting time, right? Why call these? Three times in a row they say yes, and they haven't shown up. Let's, let's take them out of this group. But now we can measure all that because we have these types of processes, right? Um, and you can't track a lot of this. You can't do this with phone banking, right? Um, so I just wanted to highlight some of these, why we like um, turning out people using events. It's not a real event. And be careful. So if you're going to use a real event, online, sign up, pay, all these things, for this type of work, because you're going to be outreach, you're going to put people in, registering them for an event or whatever, and then if you have them sign up, and then it's going to say no because you're already in this event, and then what if they want to pay? And this is purely for internal purposes, right? For you, for a group to do outreach, for whatever it may be, community-based meetings, right? Um, you know, maybe it's like really grassroots groups that just want to do like a barbecue sale or whatever, right? And they're not going to have it online because a lot of our groups, honestly, a lot of people don't have emails, right? We have people that leave uh, CBCRM power base and they go to the flashiest tool and they come back. We're like, what happened? And they're like, well, when we told them a lot of our people, they don't have emails and how do we do this? They're like, the, to combine all the answers is basically like, who doesn't have emails? Just tell them to get an email. So they come back because we can work with people that don't have emails and that do, you know, right? Um, Are there a lot of your uh, member organizations that were like, the lower income folks, supposedly, like text messaging, like great ones, low volume, like they're more, they're more common for someone to, like lower income to have a, a phone? That's what people say. Yeah. Yeah. That's what people say. And a lot of our groups do mass texting, right? And the ones we use are, we can attach to PowerBase, Twilio and Clickatel, I think, right? Um, and you have to be really careful with that, really know what you're doing. But um, I don't know. A lot of them are going towards that. A lot of groups think, oh, wait, why do this? We can just set up a Facebook event, right? Like, really? Like, not everyone's on Facebook. And a lot of young folks aren't on Facebook. And why do you want to give Facebook all this data, right? So we, we show people how to use Facebook to draw people to your events. But I go, in, in with a lot of, especially like in Iowa, a lot of the older population, people like me and older, um, a lot of it's personal connection, phone calls, people that share an email address, right? Couples and stuff. And they don't do Facebook, right? Um, so it's all, you know, it's a mixed bag. What we can do is show how small organizations can use CBCRM, the tools that it have, even if they're not for real events where you sign up and pay, but they're just like ongoing events, you can use these tools with really great capabilities to track, right? To track. And for some of these groups, they work really well, really smooth, but they put the effort into it. If a group's not ready, it's not going to work. And then we hear it all the time, it didn't work, this and that. It's like, mm. Do you know how to set it up? Well, no. It's like, and sometimes they're just busy, but if they're not ready, it's not going to work. No matter what you do, you can go to Facebook and it's not going to work because if they're not ready. So it does take time. Even this takes time. But if you understand profiles, if you understand doing this, or if you have people like, like us and you all in the room to work with to help you set it up, wow, you can start pulling up some really good data and some really good reports, right? And, and quantify this stuff. So. And then phone banking, sure, if you're going to do like that Iowa group, they did, you know, I don't know, they wanted to raise 25000 they raised 47000 five days or something like that, right? But they use phone banking, right? They had their personal campaign pages, they had their main contribution, yeah, event page, all, and then they did phone banking. But for them, they had the capacity, right? They set it up, they worked with us. It took us about a week just testing, going back and forth. And for them, it worked. And they had a consultant that was just for that. So while they paid for the consultant, it paid off dividends because they made all this money, right? So if it's a wrestling match for us right now, this round at least, uh, event turnout wins, right? 
Um, if this is like a grassroots fundraising training, which we also do, phone bank will win, right? In that case, but that's a whole different scenario, right? Um, are there any questions on any of these steps or any of the concepts? Uh, if there's time, Matt, uh, you want to talk about maybe you can show a comparison or, or this is all coming data, right? This, this is real data or it's, it's a copy of real data. Okay. That's in the yes. That's right. So if you have reports, like for a city mail report, for example, and so I'm trying to get my organizers to do it, some of them are doing it, is um, uh, that they might email 500 people in a group. And during doing that math through city mail. And then city mail, they can look at the, the mail report, they can look at the balance report, how many that emails they have, they can look at the open rate, it's not always totally accurate, but mm -hmm. it, is, it is what it is. And yeah. the click through rate. So I say, okay, so you can email 500 people about an event. Mm -hmm. And say 200 of them even open up the email. Uh, and of that, you know, maybe 30 clicked on the link. And of that email 20 actually registered to take you that from your email. So now what you could do um, is you have like six or eight or twelve you know reports in the city mail. Uh, the folks who at least opened up the you know the folks who got the email didn't open up. <coughs> you want to call them because mm -hmm. would turn out anyway. They didn't open up your email, so they're not gonna you know, come because of your un unopened email. Um, the folks who opened up the email, didn't click on the link, call them, don't say, hey, I saw you open our email, didn't click on the yeah. link, but they may have some interest uh -huh. or not, they opened the email. Um, and, um, uh, and, and then let's look at the, the results you get for how many people you turn out based on the email alone, how many folks you turn out, you send an email, you <coughs> follow yeah. a phone call, and turn them out or not because um, what, what political organizations I found and in fundraising for uh, just nonprofits if you layer different outreach activities on top of each other you get better responses whether it's making a donation or turning out to yeah. an event and so uh, using email then phone maybe doing a direct mail letter as well and uh, you know maybe a, a final phone call uh, a second one or something the more you do, the better it is. Yeah. And the question is the um, cost versus return. Yeah, I, and yeah, and, and we we do some of the same. What what I'm trying to test and find out is there's some folks who really believe that among their hardcore activists, or you know, that an email alone will turn out a bunch of them. And if they don't always go back and look at okay on the event signing sheet compare people who came to the event or registered for the event and then came to the event. People you emailed, so does, your theory, does your theory hold up? That you emailed your hardcore activists and, you know, did 80% come out with the email alone? Do you test it? Well, um, no, not yet. Because it, it, it can be an uncomfortable conversation, uh, but a good conversation to have. Um, uh, but we had a data there to test it, to test you yeah. know, the, the, the theory A and theory B, or you know, A-B testing of turning out from the event, even when you're hardcore volunteers, email alone, so take a, a sub, the half of your hardcore activists, just email them, see who comes out. Take the other half of those hardcore activists, email yeah. and phone call them to turn them out and see what better response you get. Um, Do track attendance. It's oh yeah, a, yeah, 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 yeah. So a lot of, we talk about, um, so combining email with the turnout, right? And it's also segmenting what you're talking about, right? So we've done tests with groups. They have questions about it. Oh, I don't know, this and that. It's like, let's do this. There's a concept called drip campaign from the uh, regular for-profit world, right? You drip out information in stages, right? A modified version of it, you send your, your general mail, right? And hey, donate here, whatever, you know, we're doing the fundraising, whatever. So all the people that open it, maybe, um, open it and clicked on the links, and maybe even gave, because you can track that, they go up here, you put them in a group, right? 
And by the mail reports, you can pull that information. That's the beauty of CRM, right? You can compare that. So you pull them out. These people opened it, clicked on the links. So then they're going to get a different email follow-up, how can they get more engaged and all that. But the, 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 the important thing is you can track that and put them in segment and put them in a the group. The people that didn't, maybe they opened them. As you say, opening doesn't mean all that much. So then you might get a variation. There's still time, right? You know, join us. This person joined us. So you start, you have your different techniques of how to engage these people. So you, but the, the important concept is segmenting them to then do something. So if I'm doing event turnout, right? You do one and then they turn out or whatever, or, or these people clicked on the link, you may put them in a group, put them in the event and then call them up. Because they're like, hey, you know, they actually clicked. Maybe they're interested. Or not, hey, you know, I saw you got the email, whatever, right? It's not based on just guessing, or if there's too many of them and you don't have the capacity, this is one way to narrow it down. You're you're increasing your odds, right? Because at least they click on, on the link that you provided there. So now you can easily put them in a group, add them or add them to that event, and then target them, right? And refer to the email. I used to do that all the time. It's like, yeah, I saw you click. Yeah, what do you think? Are you gonna come or not? So, but by doing that, you you know. So no, let me ask you someone who works with a lot of groups like ours, including one of our affiliates, mm -hmm. Long Island Federal Coalition. Yeah. Uh, based on either you know off the top of your head or on any kind of data analysis you all looked at, um, is it accurate not to say that? Um, Email alone is going to turn out people as much as <coughs> a phone call or email and a phone call or email and a phone call and you know, personal contact in the bottom of people. We find it's a combination. It depends on the group, but not one thing. Like it's a combination. There's no, no, no silver bullet, right? Yeah. But, but if you're set up and you, and you understand these concepts, this in addition to that, and in addition to social media, right? right. But we we. We advocate like in your social media, whatever link you put them, draw them back to your CIPI page so they can register or whatever, right? Because otherwise it's really hard to track social media up here, Twitter, Facebook and all that. And then this is your main bread and butter over here, right? It just depends, but it's a combination of things. The more, I think the more grassroots the group is, it, a lot of it's uh, personal contact. Yeah, personal contact or networks of friends. We do a really successful peer-to-peer uh, -peer type training, technology and fundraising, right? You know, you set up your personal campaign pages and all that. That's really effective. Groups that didn't have any buy-in, organizing group, the Bus Riders Union in LA, right? They were so successful at first, they went to a pilot that we did. The next training we did in LA, not only did like all their staff come, but all their bus rider organizers, people that spoke Spanish only, they wanted to be part of it, right? So they hired interpreters for the training, and then year after, now it's been only been like three years, but they've been increasing, you know, how much they raise, new donors, everything. The engagement's been increasing, right? But they're methodical about it, right? But these were people like, I'm organizing, I don't have time for all this, and now they bought into it, right? Because they're seeing the effects, right? But there's no one straight answer, but like, it's a combination of things. That's what we've seen. But being strategic about how you do your work, gone are the days that you just send everything out. Everyone who has an email list, send them out. Right. Really? Like, and it's annoying sometimes. I don't know these people. Why are they sending me this, right? Or when I get emails and they say, hey, thanks for your donation. You might want to uh, stay involved with us this way. I like those, right? Because I'm like, someone's paying attention. But you can only do this by using data like this and combining that with like the outreach. Right, and then recording it. So now I can pull up all the different things that this contact did before I call. Them. Sometimes they call me. I'm like, dude, I just gave you money last week. Can't you tell? I want to say that, but I don't. You know, but you're like, you know, at least if you collect it, you can use it. Right. So, so it's about event turnout, but it's about much more. Right. Are you building your your base? Right. Are you engaging your constituents? Right. So, any other comments or questions or um, we have a lot of different materials. We were talking earlier, um, they're free for anyone online. We have like, tons of stuff um, on how to step by step, how to do all this stuff, how to set up a phone bank. We have uh, over 40 videos online on YouTube showing you how to do different things. So y'all can check those out. Um, there's a website called, I'll put it up here. What's your YouTube channel? Excuse me, sir. What's your YouTube channel? I have no idea. <laughs> no, I don't know what it's called, but I'll show you in a minute. Yeah, sorry about that. I'm like, oh, yeah. 
Um, <clears throat> this is called network.progressivetech.org, right? So I did a search on donors, right? And then there's a lot of stuff buried in there. So like the second one, people were asking us, hey, our constituents that gave like $250 or up, the IRS says like, if that's the case, you need a letter, like a receipt. So they were like, we want to give donor acknowledgement letters. That's what the IRS says. So using the summary fields and all that, we did a training and then we put all the documentation on there. This is how you can use CBCRM to do that really quickly. Do your letters, make your template, print them out like that. And then do your mailing labels while you're at it, right? So there's things like that in here, right? Um, all of it's free, downloadable. If there's something in PDF that you want in the original document, just ask us, we'll give it to you, right? So, um, yeah, and then uh, the YouTube, I can, I can give it to you right here. It's, our help menu has all these items. And um, <clears throat> it's youtube.com slash user slash power on PTP slash playlist, right? And see, so like this one, setting up, setting up online registry. There's four videos, right? So, you know, they're all there for free. If you want a listing of all of them, you can just click here, and it gives you all these custom fields, everything, right? So, but there's other resources, right? The Civi Teacher, that, those are really good. Those videos are really good. It's a really nice style. So, we just offer everything's open source, as well as our materials, put them out there. So remember, depending on what you're doing, but this round, event turnout one, right? It is, I think it's a much simpler, way of doing it, especially for small organizations without that, that many resources. You still have to understand the process. Phone banking is great, but it's a little bit more involved, right? And you do need that. Yeah. Thank you all for coming.